Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the steps involved when it comes to creating a condensation polymer. In this video, we're going to cover the next stop point, which says describe the structure of a cellulose and identify it as an example of a condensation polymer found as a major component of biomass. It has two parts. It says describe the structure and then also identify it as an example of a condensation polymer. We'll cover both those parts in this video. The first part, describe the structure, is what we do first. And there's a couple of different things we need to know about cellulose. So this whole part was just a couple of monomers that have joined up to form part of a cellulose molecule. So this is cellulose. So the whole thing here is cellulose. Now, first of all, we've got to make sure we know that cellulose is a polymer, which is made out of monomers. And the monomers are called glucose, or more specifically called beta-glucose. So it's alpha-glucose, which makes starch, and beta-glucose, which makes cellulo cellulose. Um, so beta-glucose is a monomer. So that's one part of the structure. This is the monomer. If we have lots of them joined together, we make cellulose. Um, then we also have, so in the structure itself, we have less of these OH groups. And if anyone remembered from the last couple of videos, if we have a different word for OH groups, it is the hydroxyl groups, so hydroxyl groups. And the reason why we have less OH groups um, is because, if you remember, the, normally the structure of glucose, it has these chains coming off it. So on either end, it has OH chains, so these here, coming off it. Um, but what happened when we had a condensation reaction is they actually reacted together. So they're no more, they're gone. What we have instead is we have them linking to the two monomers, the two glucose, beta glucose monomers. They're linking at one of these oxygens. And we've lost, so all the other atoms we've lost in the form of a water molecule. Right? So with less OH groups, because the OH groups or the hydroxyl groups have reacted together to form that condensation polymer. And the good thing about that is it makes structure insoluble in water because these are OH groups is what makes things sol soluble. So if you have less of them, that means it's more insoluble. So what does insoluble mean? Insoluble means it can't dissolve. Now that's good because cellulose is used as the plant wall. Plant wall um, for cells, so plant cell walls. And obviously it's good if you have um, plant walls, uh, cell walls that don't dissolve, because if they dissolve, then it's not really gonna keep a good structure. So by re removing a couple of these OH groups, it becomes more insoluble, which means even if it's surrounded by water, it's not gonna dissolve. Cellulose won't dissolve, which is good. The second part was that we have these one for beta glycosidic bonds. Now the one for, so this part here, comes from the fact that we have um, on one of the glucoses, we have it coming from the first carbon, so carbon number one, joining with carbon number four of the other glucose monomer. So it's always from one to four, that's why it's one four. So carbon one on one glucose molecule combines with carbon four on the other glucose molecule, that's where the one four comes from. Beta comes because it's obviously beta glucose, that's where the beta comes from. And glycolytic bond, that's the that's name for when glucose molecules bond together. That's, what, that's why that, that, so that's where that comes from. Now we have third part of the structure. It's, it has this branch of carbon chains on alternating sides. So alternating means just on the opposite side. And that allows it to be straight. So I'm going to explain that as well. So if you look at here, these branched off carbons. Here we have it on top. Here we have it on the bottom. Then we have it on top again. And then we have it on, on the bottom again. Right, so it's on alternating sides. And what that does, it actually makes it straight. So this is what happens. This is, each of these is a cellulose. And this is kind of the, you can imagine this is a straight form. Now they're straight. And one of the disadvantages, if it's not straight, it's gonna take more space. So you can imagine here, if we didn't have these alternating sides, if they were all on the same side, I'm gonna write, if, same side, 
it would actually take up more space. So you can imagine you can imagine this here. It's going to take up more space to fit in. So to pack in the same amount of chains, we needed this much space for these. Whereas for these, it's a lot less. For if they're straight, we need less space, which means we can tie them more more closely, more densely. So tie packing is good. And I'm going to go over why in a second. But so they're a branch of carbon chains and are on alternating sides, always on the opposite sides. That's not a feature of a cellulose polymer. Um, now four of as many cellulose polymers line up side by side. So each of these, right, each of these here, one, two, three, four. Each of these is a cellulose polymer. One, two, three, four. And they're all next to each other. They're all straight. And they're all one by one next to each other. And the reason why that's good is because that allows us to do hydrogen bonding, hydrogen bonding between the chains. So here and here and here and here. So each of these will be connected with a hydrogen bond. And that makes them to be packed really closely and really strongly as well. So if you, like cellulose is in plant walls, and you think about how strong they have to be, how, how tough they have to be to keep them in place, make them that rigid, that strong, that to be quite tough. And those hydrogen bondings allow it to be that tough. So by being able to bond so closely, by being so closely, that means you can have that hydrogen bonding. And that's another feature, another structural feature of cellulose. There's lots of them chained, that lots of them linked up one by one next to each other. And that gives them a strong hydrogen bonding in between their chains, which makes it very strong. And also it makes it even more insoluble because if you mentioned, if you remember earlier, I mentioned that these OH groups, which are in between the two monomers, but also in between like here as well. So you have these OH groups here as well. But they're taking part in hydrogen bonding, so they can't take part in dissolving. So because they're being occupied, so I just wrote OH groups are being occupied by hydrogen bonding. What that means is that it's even less soluble, so it can't dissolve at all in water. And again, it was really important that cellulose can't dissolve at all in water, because if plant cells, plant cell walls that dissolve, that means the whole actual tree would dissolve. So you want to make sure that cellulose doesn't dissolve. Right. So I'm going to go over the structural the description of the structure again. It is it has monomers being beta glucose. It has less OH groups because they have um, taken part in a reaction to f combine the two monomers, and as a result, the, the OH groups are gone. They're gone here, and we form water. We also have these so these bonds between the, the carbons are called one four beta glycolytic bonds. That's what keeps them together. And the reason why they're called 1,4-beta is because it starts at carbon 1 on one of them, one of the monomers, and um, ends on carbon 4 on the other monomer. And they're both beta-glucose. And when two glucose molecules combine, we call it glycosidic bonds. So 1,4 for carbon 1 bonding with carbon 4 from the two beta molecules, beta glucose molecules. And that is a glycosidic bond because it's between two glucose molecules. It also has its carbon chains, so these ones that I highlighted in blue, being on the opposite alternating sides. And the reason why is because that makes it straight, a straight molecule. And the reason why being straight is good is because it allows for tighter packing, right? So if this is straight, these four take away so much space compared to if it were not straight, then they take up much more space. So they take up less space if they're straight. And to achieve it to being straight, we've got to make sure that we have the carbons, these carbon chains alternating on opposite sides. And also, um, we have increased hydrogen bonding between these chains. They're very close by. We have one, two, three, four. We would have more in the reality, but we have them next to each other. They have hydrogen bondings, which make increases the strength and decreases the solubility. So it's not soluble in water, which is good because we don't want to have our 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 cellulose dissolving, and it's really strong as well. The second part of this dot point says, identify it as an example of a condensation polymer found as a major component of biomass. So if you remember what a condensation polymer was, it was if you have two monomers that combine, so two monomers connect, and you lose a small molecule. And that small molecule is often water. So in this case, we have two of the glucose molecules connecting right here, and we have a water molecule being lost. So cellulose is definitely an example of a condensation polymer. 
and we also need to know because it says um, found as a major component of biomass. So what was biomass? Biomass is basically anything produced by nature, especially by plants. There are things which are carbon based. So carbon, so the majority of things in it are carbon or there's lots of carbon in the chain. So if you look at glucose again, we've got these carbons right here. So glucose is definitely carbon based. So that criteria is met. And the second criteria is that it has to be produced by plants via photosynthesis. And what plants produce, plants produce these individual glucose molecules, these ones here. And then they do a reaction, a condensation reaction, to go from the individual glucose into cellulose. So glucose is a product of photosynthesis, so cellulose is also indirectly a product of photosynthesis. So we, from that we conclude that biomass is definitely... Um, cellulose is definitely part of biomass itself, but it says as a major component of biomass. And there's two major components of biomass. One is cellulose, which is the cell walls of plant cells. And the other one is lignin. Lignin is um, the wood, the wood part of trees. Now, cell walls or cellulose makes up more than 50% of all biomass. So cellulose is more than 50% which means it's definitely a major component. So cellulose is a condensation polymer and a major component of biomass. So I hope that was useful.